Okay, so let me tell you about this sink, or rather the material. This is called Sil Granite, Sil Granite, S-I-L Granite, and it's only made by Blanco. It's 80% natural stone, so it's a granite composite. We take the granite, we grind it down to a pulp, we mix it with the colour, the silicon, and it's compression moulded, so we can make it any shape we like, with these nice curves and nice design features. Now, I'm showing you a white one. It is available in 10 different colours and many different designs. So, let's talk about cleaning, cleaning a sink. The problem people always talk about is watermarks and staining. So, this has got several lines of defence. The first one is how the surface deals with water. So, if I put a little bit of water here, you'll see what I mean. I lay that on there, take that away. If we watch this, you'll see immediately the water seems to bead up and run off. So very quickly, that surface is clear of water. That's going to stop the water laying on the surface and building up your watermarks. What we suggest is, once you've used the sink, give it a quick wipe over, and that'll keep it uh, nice and clean. Now, hardness, staining. Let me just show you how hard this is. We've got a stainless steel fork. If you were to do this on many other types of sink, you would damage it. If you drop that into the bowl, prongs down, like this, will very easily cause some damage to the surface. Now I'm going to show you just how tough this is. Watch this. So I'm really putting some pressure on this, and this is a normal stainless steel fork. Now those marks there, that's the stainless steel off the end of the fork. So I'm actually wearing away the end of the fork. The sink is harder than 1810 steel. So, any normal activity, such as this, with your pan in the bowl, the marks you see here, I consider that normal use. If your sink can't withstand that, then you shouldn't buy it. So, keeping it clean, I'll show you how to remove these marks. Here's a pan scrub, a little bit of water, give it a rub. Now, most of that's gone already, but because I've abused it, I'm going to use a cleanser. In this case, I'm going to use a cream cleanser, a sif, could be any type, you're not being tied into a special product. Let's just give that a quick rub with that cream cleanser. It's got a slight abrasive action to it. There we are. That's pretty much off now. And as I say, I've used that fork, which uh, it wouldn't normally expect to use in normally daily use. There we are, that's gone back to normal. Marks like this, quick rub. That's the sort of material you need in a kitchen. Now remember, I'm showing you on a white sink. It is available in 10 different colours and many different designs. So let's talk about staining. People always worry about tea, coffee, red wine, that sort of product. Now let me just dry this surface off. I always think it's uh, easier to stain something when it's dry. It's not protected by the water. So that's dry. Let me show you this. This is beetroot juice. Lethal in the kitchen. That touches anything, wood, knife handles, material, stains, and you've lost it. Let's put some of that on our nice white sink. There we are. Now, if you did have an accident in the kitchen and you have a spillage like this, hopefully you're going to spot it, you're going to clean it up and minimize the damage. The problem comes when you don't know you've done it. So, for example, put something down like that, you leave it overnight, you come back, you've got the dreaded ring. Red wine, coffee, that sort of material. Now this is beetroot juice. So I'm gonna do that. Give us some rings, a little bit of problem to deal with. Excellent, okay. Now, the other product everyone talks about is curry. Got some curry paste here. This is concentrated. It's got turmeric in it, that lovely yellow Indian spice. Let's put some of that on there, onto this nice white sink and leave that to dry off for us. Okay. Now, just to remind you, there's no special coating, there's no surface. If you take a cross section of the sink, it's the same all the way through. There's no surface to wear off or deteriorate over time. Good. Now, coming over to this side, we're talking about uh, use in the kitchen, food preparation, not just washing up. And as you'd expect, it's 100% kitchen safe. By which I mean, if you wanted to, here's a... Chef's nice, stainless steel. Take this carrot. Gonna cut on the surface there. Even that soaring action 
there we are. Now I don't suggest that you do that purely because you're going to blunt your knife. They always suggest that you cut on wood. But I wanted to show you the qualities of the material. So for example, those marks there, little soft cloth, give that a wipe, that's completely gone. Excellent. Let's come back over to this side here. Now, yes, as you can see, this beetroot juice is now dried on. So that's dried beetroot juice on this white surface. How are we going to clean that? I'm not going to use a pan scrub, I'm not going to use a cleanser, I'm just going to use some cold water. A little dribble, it's not a jet, it's cold water. I'm going to put that straight on there. As you can see, that lifts that straight off. So if you look here, it's dried on beetroot juice. I'll put some water on that, and that lifts that straight off the surface. We'll go to the curry paste, a little bit more water. There we are. Now that mark you see there, that's what everyone dreads, that yellow stain. The reason why that's clung on is because it's greasy. We just need to cut that grease. I'm going to use this. You could use any material, washing up liquid, anything to cut the grease. Sponge, straight on there. Give that a quick twist. That's gone. So that's dried on beetroot juice and uh, concentrated curry paste with turmeric. Sink deals with that no problem. And lastly, talk about food preparation. Imagine the cooking. This is on the gas electricity. You've got boiling vegetables, boiling pasta. You want to strain it into your sink. No problem at all. Here's an added benefit. You can actually place your pan directly onto the sink without any fear of damage. In fact, it's heat resistant to 280 degrees. That's the sort of material you want in the kitchen. Now remember, I've showed you a white one. This is available in 10 different colors and many different designs, including undermounted, inserts and overmounts. Still granite, thank you.